So we get to understand how to carry out the test. So the code tells us that a DC voltage, which is which is not less than twice the normal voltage. So we have to apply this amount of voltage, which will be injected by the insulation resistant tester. You will notice that in some cases, when continuity test is done, we move to insulation resistant test immediately. So while we carry out our continuity test, while we are done with continuity test, we move immediately in carrying out insulation resistant test or mega test. So but before commencing, make sure the wires we shut should be open because while we are carrying out continuity test, like we all know, we have to shut one end and then we test one end. So after that test has been done, if we are diving in straight to perform insulation resistant tests, we have to ensure that we open the end that have been shot previously while carrying out continuity tests before carrying out our mega tests. Insulation resistant tests. So we'll be referencing to DS7671 or QCS 2014 section 21 part 23. So this is a second test that should be carried out as per the code. So we'll start by defining what is insulation resistant test or a mega test. The test is carried out to ensure that none of the lines are interconnected to each other. So if we have um, our different wires that have been pulled on site, so we'll be talking of phase neutral on F. So we have to ensure that we conduct this test to ensure that we will not have any interconnection between the different wires or the different cables that have been pulled. So that we ensure by carrying out the insulation resistant test and to have a satisfactory result, which is mentioned as per the code. As per that, we will conclude by saying that we will not have any interconnection between the different phases. The value obtained should not be less than one mega ohm. This is by the code for most international standards. Measurement instrument. Insulation resistant tester or a mega tester is used to perform this test. Like we all know, before we carry out any test, we have to make sure that our, our, our measurement instruments are all calibrated and are up to date. And also make sure that you provide the calibration certificate attached to the inspection before submitting. This is a picture of a mega tester or insulation resistant tester, as you can see here. This is an MIT320 series. So here we have a test button and then we have a selector range which we will be selecting to carry out a different test, as we can see. But in this case, we'll be focusing on the insulation resistant test. So I'll be showing us on how to select to carry out the insulation resistant test or the mega test. The other picture shows a multifunction tester. So we can still use this multifunctional multifunction tester to perform the insulation resistant test. So as you can see here on the selector range, we have series of tests that can be carried out using this uh, multifunction tester. So we select on the insulation resistance range, and then we select the amount of voltage. As we keep moving, we will understand exactly how much voltage that needs to be applied to the different circuits or the different um, installation works that we need to carry out insulation resistant tests. So I move to this picture where we have two socket outlets that are being installed, and then we have a distribution board. So in this case, we'll be performing the insulation resistant tester by using a mega tester or insulation resistant tester by testing between the phase and the neutral from the DB side to ensure that we will not have any interconnection between the phase and the neutral conductor. So we'll be referencing the QCS 2014 section 21 part 23. So move to 23.2.4.
So move to QCS 2014 section 21 part 23, which is 23.2.4 in solution of the sand test. So we we'll get to see now what the code says in regards to performing the insulation resistant test. So I move to first point. Insulation resistant test shall be carried out before a completed installation is permanently connected to the supply. So this is to tell us that we have to carry out this test while, while the installation is dead. We don't have any supply or electrical power supply to the electrical panel boards that will be on the test. Large installations may be divided into groups. A DC voltage, not less than twice the normal supply voltage, RMS, room mean square value of AC system voltage, shall be applied to the measurement of the insulation resistance. It's very important. So we get to understand how to carry out the test. So the code tells us that a DC voltage, which is which is not less than twice the normal voltage. So we have to apply this amount of voltage, which will be injected by the insulation resistant tester. Voltage installations, where apparatus voltage rating does not exceed 55 volt, shall be tested applying 500 volt DC only. The second point, when measured, with all fuse links in place, all switches, including if, po if possible, the main switch closed, the insulation resistance of whole for whole installation shall not be less than one mega ohm. This is what the code is telling us. When measured between one phase conductor and other conductors connected together to earth in 10, for all phases, the insulation resistance shall not be less than one mega ohm. The fourth point, wherever possible, so that all parts of the wiring may be tested, all lamps shall be removed, all current using apparatus disconnected, all local switches shall be closed, where removal of lamps or disconnection of current using apparatus is not practicable. Respective control switches shall be open. The fifth point, where apparatus is disconnected for the test, the insulation between the enclosure or frameworks and all the live parts fees of the apparatus shall be measured separately and shall comply with the requirements of the British standard for the corresponding apparatus. Where such standard is not available, the insulation resistance shall not be less than 0 0.5 mega ohm. So this is what the code is telling us. How to conduct the test? We have to ensure that we get our checklist prepared. All cables or wires are pulled, both incoming and outgoing and as well with identification levels. This is very important. So for single phase, this is how we'll get our checklist. We'll now be testing. We'll get to look at the description, which will have phase neutral, phase earth, and neutral earth. The status will be, we'll measure a mega ohm, and then we'll get our status here, either pass or fail. For three phase, we're testing between the red phase and the white phase. We test between the red phase and blue phase, blue phase and white phase, arrow phase and neutral, white phase and neutral, B phase and neutral, red phase and earth, white phase and earth, and B phase and earth. And then we have our status here. We'll be measured in mega ohm. We we'll register our value that we get here after carrying out the test, and then we put our status either pass or fail. This is very interesting. So we get to understand why we are carrying out this test. We have safety should be taken as our priority while carrying out this test. And like I mentioned, I have a video which I've done 
on insulation resistant tests gone wrong, whereby we have um, an electrician or an apprentice that is carrying out this test without following precautionary measures and he received an electric shock. So I will still maintain that trained personnel should carry out this test. So you will notice that in some cases when continuity test is done, we move to insulation resistant test immediately. So while we carry out our continuity test, while we are done with continuity test, we move immediately in carrying out insulation resistant test or mega test. So but before commencing, make sure the wires we shot should be open because while we are carrying out continuity test, like we all know, we have to shot one end and then we test one end. So after that test has been done, if we are diving in straight to perform insulation resistant tests, we have to ensure that we open the end that have been shot previously while carrying out continuity tests before carrying out a mega test. So if you look at the graphic down, you see that we have a person at A, and then we have we have one person who is uh, A, which is standing at the DB side, and then we have another person standing at the V side or at the socket outlet. So he, first of all, he's done with the continuity test. As you can see here, we still have the multimeter. So he's done with the continuity test. Now he moves now to start performing the mega test or the uh, insulation resistant test. So while carrying out this test, the man is still carrying out a mega test while the other end of the wire is still short. He's carrying out the test. What, what he's saying here is now mega test. He's informing the person at the DB side that now mega test. The person responded, okay. This is just to tell you that these two different person performing this test, they don't know what they are doing. They need to follow precautionary measures while carrying out the test. Like I said, trained personnel should carry out this test. So if he is to carry out the test, he needs to inform him, we are carrying out or I'm beginning with the mega test or insulation resistant test as such. The person at the DB side, we know that he has to remove the wire that he used to shock both ends. Let's see what happens. The person at the DB side, as you can see, is still remaining short. And then he places the mega tester to carry out the test or to conduct the test. And then he select on the selector range 500 volt DC. This is the amount of voltage that he's about injecting to this circuit. He injects it. Let's see what happens. There's a short circuit at this end since it's still short. And what happened after that, the person at the B side receives a shock. So this will tell us, or oh, I will still keep saying it, that insulation resistant test is being conducted while the insulation installation is dead. Does not mean that we will not take precautionary measures while carrying out this test. We have to ensure that we take safety as our number one priority. And also trained personnel should carry out this test. It's very important to so train the technicians prior to proceeding with the installation resistant test because we have an amount of voltage, like the code says. The code says a voltage of not less than twice the supply voltage. This is the amount of voltage which will be, which will be injected to that circuit. So as such, if we don't take precautionary measures, we will receive a shock while carrying out this test. Now, the shock is removed and ready for insulation resistant test. So this is what we have to do. We we'll remove the shock, which we had before from the DB side. As you can see here on the field side, we don't have anything. So we have, we are now ready to perform our insulation resistant test. Carrying out insulation resistant test by setting the amount of voltage to be injected to the circuit. The code says a voltage or a DC voltage of not less than twice the amount of voltage or the supply voltage should be injected to the circuit. So if you look at our panel board, say for example, this panel board is 240 volts. This is the amount of voltage which will be twice, not less than twice the amount of voltage that hit on this panel board. So that will be the amount of voltage that will be injecting to our 
mega tester or we will have to select on our selector range and then we inject in that circuit. So after the test is being recorded or after the test is being carried out, we have to record our values that we had and then we put the status if it is pass or fit. In this case, we had all pass, which is 500 volt, 500 mega ohm or greater than 500 mega ohm between phase and neutral, between phase and earth and between neutral and earth. So I'll take us back to the mega tester. As you can see here, so this is the Mega MIT 320 series. So to carry out this test, we have to select on our selector range. The, vot the voltage which we select on our selector range should not be less than twice the supply voltage. So in that case, whereby our panel board was 240 volt, we have to select on our selector range, as you can see here, 500 volt DC. This is the amount of voltage we have to select since it's already more than 250 volt. So move to the next, which is 500 volt DC. So for a multifunctional tester, we have to select on the insulation testing part. Once we are done, we now move to the selector range to select the amount of voltage to be injected to the circuit. So in a case whereby we had 500 volt DC, which we have to inject, we now move to this range and then we select the 500 volts before carrying out the test. So once we are done with the test, we now put our different readings and then we mention the status of it, either pass or fail. In this case, we had all pass. This is a side condition whereby we have all our different wires and cables are all pulled for both incoming and outgoing, which is um, the prerequisite. We have to make sure that we pull them with identification levels prior to performing our insulation resistance test. The same year we have different cables that have been pulled in the electrical room. So we identify where all these different cables are to go, either on the SMDB or to the DB before we perform our insulation resistance test. So as you can see here, we have a load schedule which we prepared. And then on the other side, we have to mention our different tests that need to be carried out, which is the insulation resistance test. In this case, we have our main cable size, which is four core, 10 square mm cable. And then we have our head conductor, which is as well 10 square mm. So we move to this other side, which is the insulation resistance test, which will be measured in mega ohm. So we now conduct our test between the phase and neutral, which is arrow and N, Y and N, B and N, arrow and E, Y and E, then B and E, and then we have neutral and F. So these are all the different phases, the red phase, Y phase, B phase, and then we have our neutral and F. We now move to the outgoing, cables or the outgoing wires. So we perform the same test for the different wires. We will perform now for R1, Y1, B1, and then we perform as well for R2 and Y2, and the rest are going to be spared. So we'll move on the insulation resistance test, which will be measured in mega ohm. So we'll perform our test between the red phase and neutral. So this is for R1, so we perform our test and then we put our records corresponding to the different um, circuits. And then down here, we have our test instrument, which we will record the, the test instruments that we are using. We put the calibration date as well as the serial number. The same way now we move down, we find out that we will have uh, tested by the person that did that carried out the test, we'll put the name here signature and the date. Witness by, which will be the consultant in this case, we put the name, sign, and put the date as well. So this is a test which has been carried out. So we carry out a test for the main incoming cable. We had it greater than 500 mega ohm for all the different fees in neutral, and then fees and earth as well as neutral and earth. We'll move to the outgoing 
feeders as well, which is R1, Y1, and B1. And then we have R2 and Y2. We perform all the different tests between phase neutral, between phase and earth, and between neutral and earth. We have all the values greater than 500 mega ohm. Like the code says that we should have a value which is greater than one mega ohm. So if we have 500 mega ohm, the value is really okay and it's a pass mark. So we record it on our checklist and then we move as well as filling in all the different details as you can see down. Once we are done with, our, with all that, we will now be ready to submit for inspection to the consultant. So they'll come on site, we carry out the test, ensure that all the different values that we mentioned on the checklist, it's the same that we'll be performing and having on site. It's just a quick for us to understand how to perform insulation resistance tests or mega tests. And also we have to make sure that we get trained personnel to carry out these tests. And also we have to follow the code. If it is um, the different national or international standards, we have to make sure that we follow them. In this case, we reference to BS 7671 as well as QCS 2014 section 21 part 23 which we discuss on insulation resistant tests. Until then, you're watching Macroga Enterprises.